Welcome to the crazy world of DJ Khaled, where the music's loud and the drama's even louder. Imagine a guy who went from mixing tunes in New Orleans to becoming a king of memes and music. But it's not all about catchy beats. There's a side of Khaled that makes you go, really dude? Now for every hit song, there's a moment that makes you scratch your head or laugh out loud. This story isn't about a guy who loves to say, we the best. It's about digging into DJ Khaled's world, the good, the bad, and everything in between. So are you ready to see how DJ Khaled became such a talked about name? Let's dive in. Now let's rewind to DJ Khaled's early days. Khaled was born in New Orleans, far from the glitz and Snapchat filters. Born to Palestinian immigrants, music was his first love, well, after Michael Jackson. Now Khaled wasn't born with a silver spoon, instead he had a mixtape in one hand and dreams in the other. His journey kicked off in a record store, mixing tunes instead of attending parties like most teens. By 13, he was DJing, proving he was more into beats than birthday bashes. Then came the big move, Miami, where the sun shines and the music scene thrives. Khaled, with a hustle as loud as his future catchphrases, made waves at a local radio station. He wasn't just playing music, he was networking, partying, and somehow convincing everyone that he was the next big thing. His start in the music world wasn't about hitting high notes, it was about throwing big parties and getting all his famous friends to sing along. His first album didn't exactly take over the charts, but it got people to notice him. Not because he rapped well, let's be honest, Khaled is better at shouting than rapping. But somehow his way of yelling another one and songs worked. It wasn't just noise, it was his trademark and people started to pay attention. When DJ Khaled hit his stride, it wasn't just a step up, it was a leap into a whole new league. Suddenly, he wasn't just a DJ or the guy behind the scene, he became the scene. With albums dropping like hotcakes and hits that stuck like gum on a hot sidewalk, Khaled's name was everywhere. This was the era of Snapchat Khaled, the man who turned a simple app into his personal reality show. He wasn't just making music, he was making days. A major key to success, he'd say, holding up a lion statue or watering his plants and somehow, we all nodded along, buying into the wisdom of a man whose greatest talent seemed to be living out loud. Now his collaborations were like music versions of a blockbuster movie, packed with every star you could think of. It didn't matter if the song was good, it was a Khaled track, which meant you actually listened. His formula was foolproof, get famous friends, add a catchy beat, sprinkle in a we the best music and boom you got a hit but let's not forget in mr gold chains and jet skis there were those moments oh those Khaled moments like getting lost at sea on a jet ski at night because why not all right it's dark in a minute there ain't gonna be no lights to navigate us to where we need to go i'm gonna check in with y'all all right not to drive your jet ski in the dark this is against the law not even just that this ain't right. Or those times he'd offer advice that sounded deep, but was really just Khaled being Khaled. Like a guru who read too many fortune cookies. Controversies and criticism. Now DJ Khaled's ride to the top wasn't without its bumps. And I'm just not talking about the ones he hit on his jet ski adventures. Nope, Khaled found himself in hot water more times in a tea bag. First off, there's the noise about his music, or should we say the noise in his music. Some folks started to wonder, is Khaled actually doing anything? He shout another one and we the best. But was he the best at making music or just the best at making noise? It was like inviting yourself to a party, then claiming you threw it. Then came the tales of not playing nice with others. Remember the time Khaled threw a bit of a tantrum because his album didn't hit number one? That's like getting mad at the sun for setting. It happens, but our man Khaled didn't take too kindly to being second best especially when Tyler the Creator's album snagged the top spot. He posted videos claiming his music was the kind you blast in your car, not something you listen to in a mysterious room. A not so subtle dig at Tyler's experimental album. It was like being mad at ice cream for being cold. Sure competition is fierce in music, but Khaled's reaction was more sour than sweet, turning what could have been a moment of unity into a meme worthy meltdown. Music's not just about the beats, it's about the competition, and Khaled's competitive side showed up in full force. And don't get me started on the Snapchat story. Khaled turned everyday life into a series of major keys, 
but sometimes those keys led to doors better left unopened. Like the door to a cryptocurrency scam. Yep, Khaled found himself mixed up in that world, proving even the best can get caught up in a bad beat. Through all the drama, Khaled's message stayed the same. Stay positive and believe in your path. Even if that path involves a bit of yelling, a few controversies, and a jet ski mishap. Khaled's controversies weren't just setbacks, they were a part of the show, adding layers to the legend of a man who climbed the charts by being unapologetically himself, loud, proud, and occasionally questioning. Even the mightiest ships hit rough seas, and DJ Khaled's cruise was no exception. Amidst the waves of success, a few storm clouds gathered, casting long shadows over his parade of hits and hashtags. First up, the music. As the hits piled up, so did the murmurs about quality taking a backseat to quantity. Khaled's formula seemed to be louder equals better, with his signature yell becoming more of a siren warning than a hallmark of hype. It's like that friend who laughs too loud at their own jokes, except Khaled was laughing all the way to the bank. Yet the question lingered, was he crafting hits or just hitting play on the well oil hype machine? The whispers about Ghost Riders didn't help, painting a picture of Khaled as more of a curator than a creator. In the cutthroat world of music, where pinning your own lyrics is a badge of honor, being seen as the guy who outsources his artistry was akin to a chef who can't cook without a microwave. Authenticity, the currency of the realm, seemed to be in the short supply in Khaled's vault. Then there's the notion that Khaled built his empire on the talent of others. A sort of celebrity alchemist turning the gold of others into, well, more gold for himself. The industry started to side-eye the DJ who seemed to be everywhere, shouting over tracks like a hype man who forgot to pass the mic. The line between collaboration and piggybacking became as blurred as Khaled's Snapchat stories after midnight when he accidentally or drunkenly leaked his credit card number. A particularly poignant downfall came from Khaled's silence on political and social issues, most notably the crisis in Palestine. DJ Khaled, known for his loud music and even louder personality, faced big criticism for staying quiet on something really important, the situation in Palestine. Being of Palestinian descent, many expected him to speak up, especially when things got tough back home. Instead, he didn't say much, leaving fans and his family disappointed. His cousin, Fatty Musalat, was especially upset. He couldn't understand why Khaled wouldn't use his fame to help their homeland. Fatty pointed out that they both came from the same place and have family there, making Khaled's silence hard to take. He even said that because of this, they're not as close anymore. Online people were talking. Influencers and fans questioned why Khaled, who's always talking about being the best, wouldn't stand up for Palestine. Some guessed he was worried about losing deals or upsetting fans. A sign at a march and tweets showed people were really let down by his lack of action. The whole situation made people see DJ Khaled differently. They wondered if he really cared about the big issues or just about his image and money. It was a tough time for him, showing that being famous meant people expect you to speak up about big problems, not just enjoy the spotlight. And amid the echoes of another one and we the best, a chorus of voices from platforms like Reddit began to question the substance behind the slogans. Was Khaled a musical genius orchestrating the soundtracks of our times, or was he a maestro of marketing conjuring an illusion of artistry? A user said, because he's useless, he's not a rapper, he's not really a DJ, he's not a producer, he gets other people to create music and puts them on a DJ Khaled album. This scrutiny wasn't just casual banter, it was a fundamental questioning of his legacy and contribution to the tapestry of music. And his involvement in the Centratech cryptocurrency scam only compounded these criticisms. DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather face SEC charges for promoting Centratech, a crypto company without disclosing their paid endorsements. Accusations flew that Centratech misrepresented their technology and team. Their failure to disclose payment violated SEC rules, leading to a significant fine for DJ Khaled of over $150,000 and a ban on promoting crypto products for years. This scandal underscored the importance of transparency and endorsements, showing even celebrities must adhere to investment promotion standards. Another bump in DJ Khaled's road came from a surprising corner, his friendship circle. Rick Ross's baby mother, Tia Kemp, 
called Khaled out for being overly clingy, especially at Rick Ross's house in Star Island, Florida. She said Khaled would just show up uninvited, making Ross feel uncomfortable. Khaled, just tell the truth. Are you popping up over there on the golf cart, dog? Over the Star Island. You live so well with him. He ain't never been to your house, huh? Because he told me, he said, I ain't never been at Why you keep popping up to my shit? I'm like, well, just tell him. This situation spilled into the public eye when Tia talked about it online, showing everyone that even famous friends can have awkward moments. According to Tia, Ross was fed up with Khaled's constant visits, feeling like Khaled didn't respect his personal space. She joked about Khaled staying on the cheap side of the island, poking fun at him for always coming over. This drama gave people a peek into the personal lives of these music stars, showing that they deal with the same friend issues as everyone else. Rick Ross tried to brush off the drama, suggesting that Tia was stirring things up because of her own problems. He didn't directly tackle the issue with Khaled coming over too much, but tried to shift the focus away from the gossip. Now the whole story added to the challenges Khaled faced. It wasn't just about music or business, it showed he might be causing trouble with close friends too. People saw this and wondered if Khaled was really the fun, easygoing guy he seemed to be, or if there was more to the story. So Khaled's journey shows the highs and lows of fame. He faced controversy and criticism through his lack of being authentic. Now this tale teaches us about the delicate balance between ambition and authenticity. And for those who like this video, let's continue the conversation in the comment section below. Share your thoughts on DJ Khaled's career, the nature of fame, and the music that moves you. Like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the stories behind the spotlight. And guys, if you think this video is crazy, find out what happened to the guy from Boys in the Hood, Lloyd Avery. Click on the link.